Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Cole joins us today, a very enthousi enthusiastic activist with Victims of Family Law for Jorgensen and really the cause of Victims of Family Law in general. We have interviewed Chris Cole about his story, and you might think of it as a typical divorce, child support, custody kind of case. And um, while it is ratcheting up right now, and we're about to get the latest from Chris, on his recent arrests and challenges related to this. As Chris, I think himself would be quick to tell you, this is sadly typical in America, even in the age of coronaphobia. So Chris, if you would quickly, for those of our listeners who are hearing you for the first time, what background, before we get to your most recent episode, what background do they need to know about you and your story? Um, you know, to put it in a nutshell, um, I, am not married. I had two children out of wedlock. Um, after seven years of trying to work it out, relationships end. You try to go your separate ways. And when you have two children involved, the state actually, just like with marriage and divorce, um, figures that they can keep their hand in what's basically a private issue. And when you look to, um, you know, the family court system to basically help you mediate, they become more of a incentivized court battle um, and more of a, a, a machine to profit rather than to help settle a dispute. That's really just a private battle. That's an, an emotional time. They take advantage of the emotional situation, which is why family court is a $50 billion a year industry. Um, and also, as we know, uh, although people would say it's conspiracy theory tied to a lot of trafficking issues with children, CPS, uh, all that stuff. So um, we split up. Um, it's It's been over a year and a half ago now. Um, she um, wants to fight over custody because there's an incentivized value in having full custody which is based on welfare and child support uh, payments. Um, and as we know, the federal government um, in Title IV D and E uh, of the Social Security Act has incentivized um, you know, a custody situation by um, making it where the child support agency gets kickbacks or matching funds, the more child support that they collect over let's work out a custody situation um, for the best interest of children. It has nothing to do with the best interest of children. It may have started off that way when, when child support was created, but they've quickly figured out how to uh, make it a court battle and, and a multi-billion dollar industry. So tell us about your situation and, and how it led to your most recent arrest. So, um, like I said, originally child support, um, took place because when we split originally, um, my ex filed for benefits. So in order to receive those benefits, um, before they even discuss a custody arrangement, when you file for any benefits such as Medicaid in, in our, um, you know, in our scenario, um, they put you the father, which really they just have the mother put a name down um, without, and that goes into paternity fraud, but we won't talk about that today. Um, they put a name down and then you're held liable for child support without even having the, uh, the opportunity to settle a, a custody matter. So they don't ask you if you want your child, they immediately put you on a child support regimen and um, it's nearly impossible to get that removed, uh, which is why custody battles are stretched out. So my custody battle has been over two years, almost. Um, recently, um, besides going bankrupt over the last year because my income was based on lies without any evidence, um, due process is sort of ignored in family courts. Um, within a year's time of borrowing and taking out loans, I went bankrupt. Currently, I'm still fighting for custody. Uh, a year and a half later, um, I've spent over $20,000 on two or three different attorneys. 
um, as well as obviously we're in a global crisis where some people are deemed non essential. Um, that has left me unemployed. So they will not regulate my child support money to the proper amount of income that I have. So what they did was um, get me for an arrears amount of collection. So to bring it up to, to current speed, um, last week or the week prior, I'm sorry, um, I had a court date set for a Friday. I received a letter in the mail from the child support agency that says, please contact your agent to avoid court um, and pay whatever amount that, that they're asking for. I spoke with the child support agent on the phone after receiving this letter on a Monday before the Friday for court. Um, she told me that we are seeking four months worth of arrears, which at the current level of my child support at 1150 a month was $4,600. I haven't worked since all this started, but I had started receiving unemployment. However, all my other bills are back due um, for the last three months. So knowing how court operates, I knew it was all about money. I decided to give them the $4,600 that I had been received from unemployment rather than make my car payment, which is $3,600 uh, in, in arrears. Um, my thousand dollar cell phone bill, which has not been paid because it took me eight weeks to receive unemployment. I paid the money on Monday to avoid court on Friday. I did not hear from anyone on Friday. Tuesday morning, I woke up to a sheriff arresting me after I showed him the receipt on my phone dated when I paid it. Um, he wanted to take me in. I knew the sheriff. Uh, he, he's an acquaintance. He didn't, he didn't cuff me or anything. Um, made me feel very comfortable. He was very kind. And it was sort of presented to me like, we're going to straighten this out. He took a picture of my phone. Um, I told him I could email him the receipt. Um, they proceeded to take me in, take my temperature uh, to check to make sure I didn't have coronavirus. But that's irrelevant. Yeah, because because the fever is not the only thing that could determine. But um, they took my temperature, uh, proceeded to put me in holdings in the holding cell um, as I frantically dialed the phone, including having my mom. They took my phone. They took all my stuff. But I wrote down four numbers and Adam Kokesh was one of those numbers. But I couldn't call you because I could only call either collect um, which most cell phone providers don't allow or use local numbers. So I wrote down you, my dad, uh, Dr. Tory from the fatherless generation. And I'm sorry, your number and uh, Cass Jackson's number. Um, my mom reached out to you and, and, you know, unfortunately she tried to reach you on Facebook, which you're not a big fan of. So that wasn't uh, a, a good way to reach you. Um, but I spoke to you afterwards um, we wanted to get, get the news out. Um, my dad was behind the scenes trying to present both the letter that stated if I paid, then I didn't have to attend court and the receipt showing that I paid the child support agency would not speak to him. They kept me in holding. I showed the magistrate who presented me with a court order of my arrest saying that I'm being held on a $10,000 cash only bond. I was not able to get a bail bondsman because child support does not allow bail. They, they want cash payments. Child support is the only thing to my knowledge that does this. So I was going to be held in jail for a court date. Um, that was September 4th, which was over a month out. The sheriff said he would try to get me in front of the judge that Friday. Keep in mind, this was Tuesday morning, but it wasn't a guarantee. So they were going to keep me in jail for four days because apparently you can't access a judge except on a uh, child support day. You can't send an email or a text or get anything clarified until child support court on Fridays. So they were going to hold me. Um, basically, what happened, I made phone calls. I was in a holding cell for five hours. Um, it was looking pretty bleak. 
They wouldn't speak to my dad. They wouldn't speak to my mom. Finally, we got an attorney involved after spending $500 for an attorney. And um, they were willing to, I guess, pay attention then. Um, they held me overnight after I spoke to the attorney. It was after five o'clock and judges hours after five o'clock. They'll keep you in jail wrongfully because you can't contact a judge in any way, I guess, when he's off the clock for wrongful imprisonment. Um, they kept me overnight, uh, put me in population, had my whole get up on. And uh, I was released early the next morning at 930 a.m. Uh, not so much as just I guess no one knew the story or they were playing dumb was just sort of like, hey, man, good luck out there. Meanwhile, I hadn't done anything wrong. I paid my child support. Um, yeah. And so now we're 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 here. Um, and this morning at 2 a.m. And I, I had messaged you about this due to all the current events of, you know, keeping me from my kids to justify child support, put me in jail, coronavirus, no jobs, unemployment came late. Um, I paid that forty six hundred dollars to keep me out of jail. Um, my bank who I have my car loan from, um, I haven't paid in months due to a lot of different things. Obviously they, uh, sent a repo man to come get my car yesterday. Uh, luckily it was garaged, but I'm dealing with that this morning, which is why I'm backed up against the building, uh, sort of hiding now from a bank. So you see the domino effect of, a situation that just really stemmed from a breakup and yeah, well, wanting well, Chris, custody. Chris, me, yeah. What would have happened to you if you hadn't been able to make that payment and you didn't have those people on the outside making your case for you? Well, obviously without support or anyone fighting, which not everyone has a father's couch to sleep on when you can't afford a home anymore. Um, not anybody, not everybody knows Adam Kokesh to broadcast stories like this. You know, I have a, a good support team and I appreciate you letting me use your platform to, to get this message out. Um, but basically if I wasn't able to pay, if I didn't have the money, let's say I used it to pay off my car, they would have brought me in, uh, Friday for court and probably set an amount that I couldn't pay, which might've started at $4,600 and put me in jail until I could have paid that money. And what child support does is if you don't have the means, meaning they, you know, they put a, a, a false amount to pay each month on me. And if I don't have the means, what they do is they'll, they don't care. They'll, they'll assume that you'll ask family. They'll assume that you'll get that money by selling something by asking a family member to put it on a credit card. If your credit hasn't been destroyed yet, you'll use your credit card. As long as they get that extortion money, while they prevent you from being a father, I have no, I've had no due process. I've had no reason to keep me from equal access to my kids. Right now, they're just protecting the financial child support extortion amount. That's all they're doing. So, so yes, Chris, I, I, I mean, I, this is something in and of itself, like it's not shocking, right? We know that this is just one of the most vicious ongoing rackets of the American government today, what, what we call family law and, and all of its victims. And it, it's normally a, a pretty serious ongoing problem in America where governments destroy primarily men's, although we have uh, you know a, a significant number of examples where the gender roles are reversed, but it, ruining men's lives through a system that doesn't help even achieve its stated goal. Which is right? the best They're, interest of the child. Exactly. When they destroy the fathers, they, they're not... They're not saying, hey, you're a father trying to uh, trying to pay child support and struggling. Let's help you. Let's build you up. It's let's tear you down. Let's destroy you. Let's make it impossible for you to be a positive presence in your children's lives at all. Right. But now 
there's a whole other disturbing level of this where you would think not only would the system generally just could the system be more forgiving like hey we've given this authority to courts and, and attorneys and blah 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 can they at least have compassion in some cases and the answer generally speaking is no they're more than happy to ruin lives for their own profit but now when how many people in that situation of, of being expected to make some kind of child support or alimony or or other family law whatever kind of payment have just had their income disappear and are still being subject to this criminal prosecution i mean chris how widespread is this right now so um you know when it's it's basic it's it's primarily a fatherlessness issue it's 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 primarily done with fathers it does happen with mothers we do like to preface that um typically situations where mothers don't get custody is there's either a very unhealthy mother that can be proven or the father might know someone within the courts or the father has substantially a larger amount of money to fight. Um, typically what they do is you got about 85% of single parent households are mothers and that that's roughly 84%. Um, so basically we have a fatherless crisis. Um, if you talk about all the things that are occurring, and we spoke about this with Dr. Farrell, with mental health, uh, with mass incarcerations, um, with poverty, with drug, you know, not, not recreational drug abuse, but like literally overdosing, alcoholism, um, addiction issues, people, people growing up without their dad, it, there's a reason there's a mom and a dad. It's not just to make children, it's to, it's to raise children. Um, fathers offer uh, a nurturing aspect of of parenthood, just like a mother would. But the propaganda that's sold is that mothers are valuable and fathers are expendable. We we learn about this in the past with war. Um, and basically, at any cost, you know, they use the term "best interest of the child" as a as a tool to basically say, well, we deem mothers are more valuable. Fathers, your job is to pay. And we we basically put our, put our foot on the boot of a father and call him a deadbeat, even if he doesn't have the means. And we sell it as child support is just for fathers that don't want to be involved. But I can tell you from my own experience, that's not the case. They take fathers like me who love their children so much that they will pay and they will work two jobs just to see them every other weekend while fighting a, a losing court battle because eventually you run out of money and not every attorney is pro bono. So you just accept the fact that you might be reduced to a visitor to your children while being broke, living at your parents' house or working so much that you couldn't have custody of your children anyway because you work you know, over 40, 50, 60 hours a week just to pay the extortion child support payment so, so it's, Chris, it's for, with corona right now as it is is anybody in in this kind of situation finding leniency or a way to say hey please don't mess with me i've i've got i've got the corona phobia crisis symptoms of having lost my job and being at the end of my savings so um when i spoke to the young lady on child support i can tell you that Every time I've spoken with child support, it's I'm almost met with a like a I guess like the same tolerance you'd give a cat that you're allergic to, like just with a like a mild recognition, but really not listening to what you had to say. And when I told them that obviously I'm out of work because they know my occupation, I work in restaurants and I'm a musician. And I just started receiving unemployment. However, I haven't paid my other bills that I'm three months behind on. Right. Um, they, they didn't care. They wanted, they said, we will be in court on Friday asking for four months worth of payments. Keep in mind, those child support payments are set at an income that I don't make. And I can't even right. get in. So they're, they're pushing for child support collection, but I can't get a custody hearing. No, it's a, it's a really, I mean, just, just for those of you who are lucky enough to not be facing this decision, just imagine right now 
either getting back to work or Corona relief after being at the end of your savings, having been out of work for months and going, well, now here are all these bills coming due and right. it's cell phone, car payment, insurance, rent. And then if it's child support on top of that, well, one, if I, if I, if I, don't, if I skip my, if I cut my cell phone, I have no way to communicate. If I cut my car, I have nowhere to get around. If I, if I cut my rent, I have nowhere to live. If I cut my child support, I go to jail. Well, so you're not paying child support because going to jail means at least you're fed and you got a place to live and you can communicate with people to the extent that you can when you're, I mean, this is, it is, it is an impossible dilemma and that, that, that Chris was able to, to narrowly escape incarceration for an extended period in his case is, is, is we're talking about someone who is who is relatively lucky and kind of on the cusp here. And for everybody in Chris's situation, yeah, there are a handful who uh, haven't had any economic challenges with Corona, but then there are millions. And I, I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but it's got to be at least in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people of Americans right now who are suffering either unemployment or major income loss, who are struggling to make child support or alimony or some other kind of family law payments. So Chris, just, just to wrap things up, I, I, I mean, I kind of want to say like, do you, what new things do people need to know right now for, but you know what, I, I got to say also, what advice do you have that you just want to reiterate that's, that's especially relevant right now. And what advice would you have for someone who's in your situation or maybe a slightly worse situation than what you're in right now? So I would say right now, especially with what's going on in the world, I would encourage everyone to say enough is enough. I would encourage everyone to do their own media, reach out to Adam. If you got a good story, Maybe he'll get you on the show. Um, I'm doing podcasts. There's tons of organizations doing it. Literally, the the it's got to stop with us. And we got to – Victims of Family Law for Joe Jorgensen. Um, obviously, I'm the director of that. I went from Adam's um, campaign over to Joe's. Um, Adam got this whole thing started with me, so I appreciate that. Um, what we got to do, guys, is – like Adam said, I'm running for office. I don't know what to do. I don't have the best advice. I'm narrowly escaping jail. I had support to get me out. Um, currently, I'm hiding my vehicle from the bank who wants to repossess it because I had to pay the child support instead of making the car payment that's been late since coronaphobia started. Um, and, you know, what's my best advice? Speak up. Fight. Make a scene. Because abuse only happens when we allow it to. And what they're going to do is even, you know, Adam, we've, we've done tons of videos. I can guarantee you that during my custody trial, they will try to manipulate this conversation of truth somehow to keep me from my kids to keep the extortion going. Um, so my advice is to speak out, reach out, talk to me, talk to Adam. You know, I got a, I got a few interviews set up this week just after I've been wrongfully imprisoned um, with Larry Sharp on Thursday with the libertarian gubernatorial candidate, um, Steve DeFiore here in North Carolina, him and I are going to speak tomorrow. Um, I set up an interview with you because uh, you know, I was like, Adam, I just got arrested. I've never been arrested. Um, and the first time I ever got arrested, it was for doing the right thing. Um, so it was baffling to me. So my advice, fight, speak up, don't be violent. Uh, we do have a national child support protest that we're trying to set up. If you go to the child support hustle.com or their Facebook page, we are trying to rally troops to get in front of family law courts, civil courts, or child support agencies, whether I'm in my state or another state, wherever I can help form the larger group. Uh, I may travel to Oklahoma and, and join some, some fellow advocates there with Cass Jackson. August 17th, 
we are we are protesting the unconstitutional child support agency that puts profit before parenting. This isn't about deadbeat parents anymore. This is being used to extort and kidnap American children and children across the world. So I love my kids so much. Uh, I'm not willing to let this happen. And I'm still scared. I, I didn't I was in jail with people that did things wrong. And uh, it was it was an interesting experience that I hope will be my last one uh, as we keep pushing ahead. All right, Chris, I really appreciate that. What websites do you want people to be able to connect with you on and or uh, ways to get in touch with you? Victims of Family Law for Joe Jorgensen has a page and a group on Facebook. Uh, there is also a Victims of Family Law page for or group for North Carolina. I encourage anyone who is a victim of family law, reach out to me. I'd love you for you to create your own affiliate page in your state and county. Um, this is the time. We're seeing it in the world today in 2020. It couldn't be more obvious that we can't trust government. And I can tell you what, family law opened my eyes to that. And that's why I'm a libertarian today. And that's why Adam Kokesh brought me on this show to tell you guys the truth. Adam made me a libertarian. I appreciate all your help and all, uh, you know, bringing me onto your campaign and moving ahead to the future. And anything I can do for you, Adam, excluding money right now, please let me know. All right. Thank you so much, brother. Really appreciate you having the courage to tell this story. I think, like I've said before about victims of family law, this is really critically important because this is a black swan waiting to happen. There are millions of Americans who should identify as victims of family law publicly, loudly, whether it's as a victim of divorce court or you know, uh, being a child of divorce or having your kids taken from you or any of these other tragedies imposed on families by government. Instead of being cowered into submission to being afraid or being ashamed or being guilty. So Chris, thank you for being a wonderful example for others who should have the courage to speak out and see that we put an end.